Hello everybody and welcome back to Factorio 101. In this series I'll be showing you some... Oh, we got an auto save. In this series I'll be showing you some ways to speed up your gameplay. Perhaps make it a little bit easier for you because I know that some people don't find this game as easy as others. And just make it a little bit more enjoyable for you because uh, a lot of people don't know these methods that I use. Which is... Uh, not good, because you can get overflows and make things less efficient, and nobody wants that. So today, I'll be showing you a little method called the tree method. Admittedly, I did not make this. However, I will be showing you how to do it and why it works so well. So, I set up a simple furnace, uh, minor to furnace system here. It's just taking it out of the furnace and putting it onto this conveyor belt. Now. What this system basically is, is you have two columns of transport belts going down. One side is your copper, and one side is your iron. And I'll show you a more advanced uh, way of doing this later with more materials. But this is the basics, basically. And the idea is that from the central column, you have branches coming off, hence tree. And these branches can be... Oh, I'm getting attacked somewhere. Can be made into so so they can be made into components and other things without jeopardizing the space from this central column if that makes sense so if I wanted to make more red science packs like I'm doing here I could span this out infinitely because you can see this the central column of materials is horizontal and I'm building vertical so my only limit is the world the world size basically so I could, I, I could just keep on expanding this out and there'd be no problems here, there'd be no space restrictions. Because generally what people have is they make a very condensed system which doesn't tend to work out very well for them because obviously they don't have enough space and then you get problems with overflow and the efficiency just drops and it's, it's not very enjoyable having to you know, walk, uh, I'm sure everyone's had this problem, walk along transport belts, pick up all your materials, because uh, nobody enjoys that. So that's the basics of the tree system. So recap, two columns, copper, iron, going down one central, two block wide, and branching off with splitters. Pretty simple, pretty, pretty simple. Now. Let me explain the splitters, because I haven't actually explained them. The splitters obviously split the source off, because they have two outputs. So one output goes to the branch, and the other output continues down the tree. Simple. So, from this, you can get more branches, because obviously the output is still going down this two block wide trunk. Easy. Really, really easy. Also. You can still feed your underground belts underneath, so if you want to feed the copper round, you feed it in a loop, have it go underneath. Works the same way. Now, I'm going to move over to a more advanced system to show you that and explain that to you. So, as you can see, this is my main factory. It's pretty big. Now, like I was explaining earlier, I have the central, I guess, trunk here with the copper and the iron going down. And as you can see, I've split it in directions to create components, materials, and likewise. Really, really simple. So as you can see, it's split it, it's come out, and it's making several different things in this vertical direction while the trunk is actually going horizontal so you're not jeopardizing any space here and it can basically go on infinite, infinitely and your only limit is the world. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, you can also add more advanced materials coming down this trunk to, uh, well, to make several trunks. So as you can see here, I've made iron gear wheels and circuits go down a separate trunk. Uh, this is important, obviously, because a lot of endgame items, especially stuff like these advanced circuits, take a, a lot of circuits, and you kind of need a big line of them in order to sustain that. 
And as you can see what I've done, I've left a two block gap here. And like I was saying earlier, when you're splitting uh, when you're splitting materials off, you're going to want this two block gap to make space for the underground belts. That's basically the reasoning for that. Really simple, really easy to understand there. So um, I don't think there's much more to explain to this really. It's a really simple system and it's, it just works really efficiently as you can see. There's no clog ups on my system and your only limiting factor is the space of your world and how fast you can basically pump out your materials. Because obviously when you're splitting off all of these materials down your supply line, it's going to get thinner as it goes down due to all of the materials being used at the front and then it gets thinner at the back. So what, what I've actually done, there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of mining drills. So as long as you can sustain sustain your iron output, this this system is probably the most efficient in the game. Like, hands down, it's very simple. So I hope you guys actually understand that. It was probably a bit higgledy-piggledy in some areas, but uh, I feel like I explained it pretty well. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this system. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, Put in the comments and what you want to see next on this little Factorio series because some people have trouble with this game and I'm here to teach you some ways. Also I can probably make a world download somewhere so if you want to check out this system for yourself I can do that for you. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in another episode of Factorio 101.